Hey everybody, Norm from Tested here, and today I want to talk to you about a VR video. Video that's shot to be viewed in virtual reality headsets, whether that's the Oculus Rift, uh, the HTC Vive, or something like the Oculus Go. Uh, you may have seen a bunch of 360 cameras. There are a bunch of these on the market. These are handheld cameras that have two fish eyes lenses, two sensors, and it's easy for you to walk around and film. A company like Insta360 has made a great one, the uh, One X. That I used last year, and there's some great stabilization software now. So you can take it to events and you can basically let people see all around you. I'm sure you've probably seen some of these 360 videos on YouTube or Facebook. But more interesting to me is stereoscopic video. That's 3D video. Because one of the benefits of using and viewing content on a VR headset is because there's two lenses, is 3D is just built. In. So a bunch of camera companies are experimenting with ways to bring 3D to VR. And there have been 360 VR setups. Google had their whole Google Jump setup. People have rigged up a bunch of GoPros and stitched them together. But on the consumer side, we're just beginning to see some off-the-shelf turnkey solutions that let you film in 180-degree VR. Most notably, last year, uh, Google partnered with Lenovo for the VR 180 camera to work with their Daydream headsets. and that's this camera right here. It has two cameras side by side, two wide angle lenses, basically lets you see about 180 degrees, but because the distance between these lenses are approximately the distance between your eyes, it then simulates what your eyes see and it's like being in where that camera is. It's a really cool effect. We're learning all sorts of things about the type of content that looks great in VR 180, what you can do with camera moves, what you shouldn't do with camera moves, and something like this is relatively affordable. Now, there's also on the high end, there's a camera system like this. This is from a company called Zcam. It's called the K1 Pro, and it's definitely a little bit of more of a heavy duty camera system. You see bigger lenses, it's actually much bigger sensors, micro four thirds sensors, records on two separate SD cards, and we've been using this for some production that you'll see in the future, and Joey will be doing some more talking about this. On the consumer side, though, you can get quality that's that's almost the quality of the Zcam, almost the quality of a Micro Four Thirds sensor with a new product that's just being announced today, and that's also from Insta360. It's called the uh, 360 Evo. Now, that's this guy right here. Now, it does look just like a traditional 360 camera. You see the lens in the front and the lens in the back, but what's cool about this is that it actually transforms. It's locked in place right now. I can press a button, and then it pops and folds out, and it goes from monoscopic 360 to stereo 180, and that's just locked in place right now. Now, unlike something like the Zcam K1 Pro, it's not two separate SD cards, it's one micro SD card. It shoots at 5.7K resolution at 30 frames per second, and then all that pops up in one SD card, and you can do either stitching, which is taking the two side-by-side -side images and then reprojecting it into an equirectangular frame. That's what you get when you download like a VR 180 video. It doesn't look like fisheye, it's kind of stretched out. You can do that via the app, or you can do it via some desktop software. And it really is a nice turnkey solution for filming some pretty high quality VR 180 video, which I've been testing with this for the past couple of days. Now, 5.7K resolution. Why would you need that high resolution when on a headset, even like the Oculus Go, you only have about 2560 uh, pixels wide? Well, that's because that's a 16 by nine frame. When you're talking about f over 5,000 pixels of resolution, that's filling 180 degrees. And so you need all those pixels so that when you look around with that 2560 by a 1440 resolution uh, frame, you can actually see everything around you. And so this does 5.7K at 30 FPS. You can actually downgrade that to 4K, and if you want more frame rate, at 50 FPS, and it even goes 3K resolution up to 100 FPS. And you know, I had some fun filming my pet, uh, Ripley, uh, at 100 FPS, slowing that down to 25% speed, and uh, seeing her play with her dog toy, uh, even though at 3K resolution, you can tell the image quality uh, leaves a little bit something uh, to be desired. Now, because this is also made by Insta360, it has uh, the flow stabilization technology, the flow state technology that I liked last year from their One X, and that means if you're filming in uh, 360 mono mode, it'll take all that gyro data, and within the app, it'll really stabilize it. So if you're mounting this on uh, any type of moving object, or if you're just walking down the street with it, 
the image quality is still pretty uh, stable. Now, one other cool thing about this camera and a way to view uh, the video out of this VR180 camera is an optional accessory. They're calling this the hollow frame, and it looks like a phone case. I actually think this is a really neat idea. Uh, it's a clear phone case that you can just pop off, and you can see there are volume buttons on both sides. That's because, as you can tell, it's not protecting the back of my phone. I've actually taken it off and put it on the front of my phone, and it is a lenticular filter for your phone screen, kind of like the Nintendo 3DS, which means, you've guessed it, it'll allow you to see that stereoscopic video on your phone without the need for 3D glasses. And the effect is actually really cool. Now, lenticular screens on phone screens, it's not something completely new. We've seen some 3D uh, phone uh, screens built into phones before, uh, but I like that this is optional and it takes advantage of the front-facing camera on your phone to do eye tracking. It's kind of essential. It needs to know where your eye is so it knows how to split those images to match the lenticular screen. It doesn't work perfectly the whole time and there is calibration needed, but when the effect works and you find that sweet spot, it's a really easy way to take that 3D video that you shot with the Evo and view it without having to stitch it on the desktop and then sideload it onto a VR headset. I think this camera is super neat. I'm really glad that more companies are releasing VR 180 cameras because I want to see more people producing content with these type of cameras. I think 3D content in VR headsets is super compelling and so that's available uh, now and I think it's a super super neat camera that you should at least check out the content if you have an Oculus uh, Go. We'll be doing more coverage of uh, different camera technologies and VR technologies in the future. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.